Get ready to dive deep into this fascinating world yeah. of digital provenance and authenticity. Right. You know how important it is to protect your creative work these days, right? Oh, absolutely. Especially with, you know, AI and all that stuff. Yeah. That's why today we're exploring content credentials. Uh -huh. um, you can think of them as like nutrition labels okay for digital content i like that instead of calories and fat yeah we're talking about origin edits you know right and even ai involvement that's fascinating really what's so interesting to me is how it's pretty cool right yeah it really is it's how this technology is tackling the growing concerns you know yes. around misinformation right deep fakes yeah. you know that whole world being able to know was this image like how can you tell if an image was like made by a human or by AI. Right, or was it dreamt up by AI? You know, how yeah. responsible is this AI? All of that. So imagine, like, you're scrolling online and you can instantly verify the origin and history of a piece of content. And think about how that would change. Yeah, like, would that change the way you interact with stuff online? Oh, absolutely. And this whole need for transparency like that. Yeah. It was recognized way before generative AI was a thing. Yeah. You know, back in 2019, oh, wow. Adobe co-founded the Content Authenticity Initiative, or the CAI. So this isn't just like a knee-jerk reaction to, like, the newest AI craze. No, not at all. This has been going on for a while. It's been brewing, and the industry is really taking it seriously. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The CAI now has, get this, over 30,700 members. Wow, that's a lot. It is. Okay, so who are these members? You've got major tech companies in there. Oh, wow. Social media platforms. Interesting. News organizations, uh -huh. and even camera manufacturers. Wow. Okay, so that's a huge vote of confidence, I'd say, for that's this good. whole thing. Big time. It sounds like a pretty big deal. It is. Okay, so where does Adobe, you know, yeah. fit into all this? Like, what are they actually doing to, you know, make this happen? Well, Adobe is really, you know, leading the charge. Oh. They're integrating this content credentials technology hmm. into their software. So, like, Photoshop, okay. Illustrator, Premiere Pro. Got it. And this is especially important with, you know, stuff created with Adobe Firefly, which is their AI tool. Right, right. You know? So they're not just talking the talk. They're walking the walk. They are. That's good. They are. What about creators who don't use Adobe products, though? Yeah. Are they just, like, left out? No, not at all. Adobe is actually launching this free web app okay. in early 2025. Oh, okay. And it's called the Adobe Content Authenticity Web App. Good she. Yeah, it's a mouthful. Okay. But this will allow any creator to attach those credentials oh, to their work. Regardless of what software. Exactly. Oh, wow. So that's a game changer. It is. Now, this technology is for everyone. Yes. It is. Okay, walk me through this. Okay. What can creators actually do with this web app? So you can do things like batch apply credential right. to a bunch of files at once. All right. So it saves you a lot of time and effort. Makes sense. You can also specify yeah. your preference yep. regarding, you know, yep. the use of your work for AI training. Wait, hold on. Yeah. You're telling me creators could potentially, like, have a say yes in whether their work is used to train these models they can that's huge it is huge this feature is called generative ai training preference okay and basically it lets creators signal you know yeah hey am i okay with my work being used to train ai or not right and this thing called spawning which is an ai opt-out aggregator okay will honor those preferences that's amazing but how can creators like be sure that these preferences are actually being respected. Right. That's where interoperability comes in. So the C2PA, which is the Coalition for Content Provenance and Authenticity, right. it's a global standards organization. Okay. And they're working to ensure that content credentials are interoperable uh -huh. across different platforms and software. Okay. Break that down for me. What does interoperable actually mean? So think of it like a universal language right. for digital authenticity. Got it. It means that content credentials applied using one platform right. will be recognized yeah. and readable by any other platform that supports the standard. Okay. So it creates like a, you know, seamless and trustworthy digital ecosystem. So it's like having one universal charger for all your devices. Yes, exactly. No matter where you go, you know that your content credentials will be understood. Exactly. So that's really clever. Yeah. And this is how we create a future where those content credentials are not just a, you know, 
a nice to have, but like a fundamental part of how we actually experience digital content. This is all incredibly promising, but I can't help but wonder, is technology alone really enough to solve all these problems? Misinformation, you know, the digital manipulation. What do you think? That's a really good question. Yeah. You know, technology is a crucial piece of this whole puzzle. Right. But it's not like a magic bullet, right? Yeah. We need to address like the human element as well, like yeah. how we actually think about yeah. and interact with digital content. So it's not just about building the tools. Yeah. It's about changing like behaviors. The behaviors, expectations. You okay. Know? So like imagine, you know, you're scrolling through your social media feed yeah. and you see content credentials displayed alongside every image and video. Alongside everything. Would that make you like pause and think more critically about what you're actually seeing? I think it would. I think it would too. Especially, you know, yeah. with these deep fakes, the AI generated content. Right. It's so convincing these days. It's getting so good. Yeah. And so just being able to quickly check, you know. Yeah, like where it came from, what edits were made. Yeah, the origin edit history yeah. of an image or a video, that would be like a game changer. That really would. Yeah. Content credentials could actually empower us to become like yeah. more discerning consumers of information. Right. So we're not just like passively exactly. starving exactly. whatever pops up right. or like we would question we would verify yeah we would make judgments you know based on evidence yeah it's almost like having like a superpower totally totally being able to see through all like the digital smoke and mirrors it's like having x-ray vision for digital content okay but with great power comes great responsibility right always always there's always a flip side so what are some of the potential downsides or you know challenges right. with this technology. Well, one of the big ones is privacy, right? Okay. You know, some creators might not want to attach like their real identity to their work. That's fair. You know, they might fear like unwanted attention, harassment. Yeah, especially, you know, if they work in sensitive areas. Absolutely, or if they just like to be anonymous. Right. You know, it's their art. Exactly. And that's why it's so important to have like really strong privacy controls. Yeah, like baked right into the system. Built into the system, yeah. Users should be able to choose, you know, yeah. what information they share, who they share it with. So it's about giving creators control over their level of transparency. Yes. Not forcing them to like reveal everything. It shouldn't be an all or nothing thing. Right, right, right. And then on the technical side of things. Yeah, what about that? There's definitely a risk that all of this could get yeah. too complicated or burdensome for the average person. Right, because if it's too hard. If it's too hard to use, yeah. no one's going to use it. Right, like it needs to be user friendly. User friendly and intuitive. Yeah, something that even like your tech challenge grandma could use. Exactly. And that's why the work being done by, you know, organizations like Adobe and the C2PA, it's um, so important because yeah. they're really focusing on creating standards and tools that are both like really strong, but also accessible. Right. So right. they have to find that balance. Speaking of Adobe, they've been like pretty vocal. They have. About, you know, their commitment to this whole thing. They've been very vocal. Yeah. It seems like they're really putting their weight behind it. It does seem that way. But let's be honest, they're not doing this just out of, you know, right. the goodness of their hearts, right? right? They're a business. They are. They have shareholders. They do. So, you know, what's in it for them? Right. Good question. How does this benefit, you know, their bottom line? Yeah. So I think there are a few ways that Adobe could potentially benefit from this. Okay. First, it positions them as like a leader yes. in this fight against misinformation, right. digital manipulation. Okay. And that enhances their brand reputation. Okay. Makes sense. And it builds trust with their customers. So it's a savvy like marketing move. It is as, a well, as... as well as a technological innovation. So huh. it's both. Okay. Second, it could give them like a competitive edge, right? Right. As more creators are like, hey, I want content credentials. Uh -huh. Those who are using Adobe products yeah. are going to be in a good position to meet that demand. Right. It's like a built-in advantage. It is. It is. Yeah. And then third, let's not forget that Adobe is also developing AI tools, right? Right. Like Firefly. Like Firefly. Yeah. So by promoting content credentials, yeah. they're kind of creating this framework for <laughs> like responsible AI development and use. Okay. And that could help like mitigate some of the ethical concerns yeah. surrounding AI. Makes sense. So it's a strategic move, yeah. you know, that yeah. aligns with their business interests. Yeah. But it also like 
addresses a real need in society. Right. Right. But Adobe's not the only one doing this. Oh, right? absolutely not. There are other There are other companies, organizations yeah. working on similar things. Do you think this is like a trend we're going to see across the whole industry? That's the question, isn't it? Yeah. I think it depends on a few things. Like what? Like consumer demand, you know, what are people actually asking for? Right. Regulatory pressure, like are governments going to get involved? Uh -huh. And also just the evolution of the technology itself. Makes sense. But one thing is for sure, this conversation about digital provenance yeah. and authenticity, it's only going to get bigger. Okay, but let's zoom out a bit Okay. and look at the bigger picture here. Yeah. Even if content credentials become like a normal thing. Right. Is that really enough to solve like this whole misinformation problem? That's the big question. Yeah. Because, you know, people can still choose to just ignore the credentials. Right. Or just misinterpret them. Exactly. Exactly. So technology can provide the tools, the solutions, but it can't force people to actually use them wisely. Or ethically. Or ethically. Yeah. What we need is a much bigger cultural shift. Okay. We need to change our mindset about how we, you know. How we consume and share information. Exactly. Give so it's not enough to just have like the tech in place. No, not at all. We have to educate people about why this matters. About why it matters and how to use it properly. Yeah. Is that teaching people to like read food labels? Yes. That's a great analogy. Once you understand like, you know, what all those ingredients yeah, are. Well, what they mean, what, yeah. like what the nutritional values are. Then you can actually make like informed choices about what you're eating. Right? Exactly. Exactly. So content credentials are kind of like, you know. Like a digital nutrition label. That's a great way to put it. Okay. That's a good one. Helping us make smarter choices about the information we consume online. I like that a lot. This all sounds very promising. Yeah. But are we being like overly optimistic here? Is it really realistic to think that this kind of cultural shift will actually happen? It's a big question. I mean, you know, there's always going to be people there are. who are easily misled or who just, you know. Who want to take advantage. Who yeah. Who want to, you know, spread misinformation for their own benefit. Right. So, yeah, you know, there are always going to be challenges and setbacks. Yeah. But I believe that, you know, trying to create a more trustworthy digital world, mm. that's a worthy goal. Yeah. And that we have to keep pushing for change. So how do we do that? Like, how do we actually make this you know, a reality. Well, it starts with conversations like this one, right? Okay. We need to raise awareness. Yeah. We need to educate ourselves and others. Mm -hmm. We need to push for greater transparency and accountability. Online, yeah. Online, we need to hold platforms and companies accountable yeah. for their role in shaping, you know, what this digital world actually looks like. Right. And we also need to be very careful in our own consumption of information. So demanding evidence. Yes, evidence of authenticity and provenance before we believe anything or share anything. So it's a collective effort. It is. It requires us to be, you know. To be informed, engaged, and proactive. All of that. Yeah. Okay. This has been such a fascinating conversation. Yeah. But before we, you know, move on to the last part of our deep dive here. Okay. I want to leave everyone with, like, a question to think about. Okay, hit me. So how would widespread adoption of these content credentials, right? Yeah. How would that change the power dynamics online? Oh, that's a big one. Like who would benefit from this? Right. Who might lose out? Yeah, who are the winners and losers? And how would it reshape the relationships between creators, consumers, and these platforms? It's a big one to think about. It's a big one. It's something to think about as we, you know, consider the future of digital content mm -hmm. and the role that trust and transparency will play in shaping that future. Yeah. That really is a thought-provoking question. It is. It makes you realize that these content credentials, mm. they're not just about, you know, protecting individual creators. Right. They could have, like, a ripple effect across the entire digital landscape. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It gets to the core of, like, who controls the narrative online right. and how information actually flows. Right, because right now, you know, it feels like these platforms, yeah. they have a lot of power. A lot of power. They, You know, they choose what we see. They curate what we see. They control the context around it. Exactly. But with content credentials, yeah. it feels like creators could gain more control over how their work is presented. Absolutely. Attributed. Yeah, even as it's shared and remixed. Right. Across these platforms. Across different platforms, yeah. 
It's like giving creators a direct line to their audience. It is. It's a way to bypass those traditional gatekeepers. Okay, so that sounds pretty radical. It is a bit radical. But let's be realistic. Uh, How would these platforms actually react to this kind of disruption? That's a good question. Would they, like, embrace this increased transparency? Or would they see it as, like, a threat? It It's hard to say for sure, but I think some platforms might see it as a way to, you know, build trust with their users, enhance their brand image. They could say, you know, hey, we're the champions of authenticity and transparency. So it's actually like a smart business move. It could be, yeah. For them. For some platforms, absolutely. Okay, but others, they might resist, especially if their business model is all about, you know, controlling content, monetizing user data. (laughs) If they rely on opacity, then... Yeah, they're going to push back. Content credentials could, like, totally disrupt that. They would disrupt it. Yeah. But let's not forget about, you know, the most important players in all of this. Yeah. The consumers. The people actually using these platforms. Right. So how would, like, widespread adoption of this technology change their behavior? I think it would make people a lot more aware of where information is coming from and how to evaluate its trustworthiness. So it's like raising the bar for digital literacy. Exactly. Exactly. It wouldn't be enough to just like blindly accept whatever you see online anymore. Oh, right. You would have to think critically about the source. It's like, you know, the evolution of food labeling. Yes. Love that analogy. You know, once people started paying attention to like the ingredients, the nutritional information. Right. They started demanding more transparency from those food companies. Exactly. Content credentials could have a similar impact, I think, on the digital world. It's about giving consumers the power to make informed choices. Right. So it's not just about like passively consuming whatever pops up. It's about being more selective. Yeah. It's about quality over quantity. Exactly. But even with like the best intentions yeah there are always going to be people well there always are who try to you know defeat the system absolutely try to forge credentials you know find loopholes uh, find loopholes to exploit yeah there's always someone trying to game the system right but this technology makes it a lot harder to operate in the shadows okay it's like shining a light on the origins of information okay and it makes it much harder to manipulate or hide things so it's not a perfect solution, no. but it's a big step in the right direction. A big step, yeah. It makes me think about, you know, how this could change the fight against misinformation. Absolutely. Imagine, like, being able to instantly check if a news article right. or a social media post is actually real. Exactly. That's the power of this technology. Content credentials could be, like, such a powerful tool they could in that a- fight. Absolutely. For combating fake news, you know, propaganda, propaganda, all of that. So it's like instead of just taking things at face value. Right. Now we can actually. We can verify. Yeah. We can hold people accountable. We can demand evidence. Exactly. This whole conversation has been like really eye opening. It, it feels like we're you know on the verge of a yeah. new era for digital content. It's a new era. Where trust and transparency are like the most important things. It's exciting. It is exciting. It's also a bit daunting. Yeah. It's a big change. So as we wrap up this deep dive, yeah, what's like the one thing you want our listeners to take away from all of this? I think the biggest thing is that the future of digital content really hinges on trust. Okay. Right? Yeah. And that trust is built on transparency, accountability, right. and the ability to actually verify what we're seeing and hearing online. Right. And content credentials are... They're a huge part of that. Yeah, they're like a really powerful tool in making all of that happen. Absolutely. So by understanding and embracing this technology, you can actually play a role. You can be a part of it. In shaping a more trustworthy digital world. Absolutely. Well said. So to our listeners, we encourage you to keep exploring this topic, ask questions, demand transparency, and support the creators who are committed to authenticity. The future of our digital world really depends on it. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. 